<sighs> so guys, let's start up our first live event. So for those of you guys that are new here, my name is Pokey Rub, and welcome to the Pokey King. So it's really good to see all you guys. I'm going to try to read some of the comments right now and let some people join, but I have a lot of really awesome stuff set up for this live event. We're going to be opening up vintage booster packs. We're going to be opening up a box right here that has a $2,000 booster box in it. Uh, I'm going to show you guys a lot more stuff. I'm going to answer a bunch of your guys' questions. Um, but yeah, guys, so let me just hop in the chat real quick and see what we have going on here. Um, what's going on, Ryan? What's going on, Ruxin? Good to see you here. Mike Davis, what's going on, guys? BTR Gaming. Hey, everybody in the chat. So I'm going to set specific time where I can actually go over people's questions. So if you guys have questions um, about Pokemon in general, collecting, um, even the business aspects of it, I'm going to try to answer a lot of your guys' questions in this live event. And we're just going to see how the video goes. And yeah, we're just going to give you a bunch of stuff. So let's get started. Um, so right off, guys, I have a box. Got this box in the mail today, actually. And I was about to open it up and I was like, you know what? Let's try to do this live. And let's see what's inside here. And yeah, I mean, I'm pretty pumped up. And of course, I don't have my knife. Give me one second, guys. I'm totally unprepared for this event. Got my knife. And of course, I don't have any sleeves. Oh, all right, guys. So let's crack into this box. Hopefully you guys can see this. And I got one camera set up today, so, you know, low budget, but we're going to figure it out since this is the first live event. There's a lot of technical stuff behind the video. Yeah, no sleeves. All right, guys. So hopefully you can see this, but there is a bunch of peanuts in here, and I really, I don't mind the peanuts as much for protecting the stuff inside, but the problem is when we open this up, the stuff gets everywhere. So I'm literally just gonna have to dump this all over the place, but let's do it. Oh, peanuts everywhere. But guys, in here is a $2,000 booster box. I'm gonna show you the box up close. <laughs> Eat the peanuts, Jordan. What's up, Jordan Fringe? You guys uh, know Jordan Fringe, probably do. He is a fellow YouTuber. Good to see you here, Jordan. Thanks for Jordan. What's up, Omesh? We got another YouTuber. You guys, make sure you check out him as well. Awesome, guys. Oh, all right, so we have, we're into the bubble, the actual bubble right now. This is where it gets difficult. Okay, guys, here we go. And how's everybody doing today? I'm really glad that all you guys joined up on this live event. Really excited to do this with you guys. So let's check out what we have in here. Boom! Here it is, guys. We have a Japanese rocket booster box factory seal. Check this out, guys. We got Gyarados on the front there. We got Team Rocket. We got Gengar. We got all these awesome Pokemon. And guys, I am going to do a video on this. We're going to do another series. So if you guys saw my Japanese challenge booster box opening. I opened up one of those and went for the binder. And guess what we're gonna do, guys? We're gonna go for the Rocket binder set. There's Dark Charge on here. There's Blastoise in here. I mean, this is gonna be awesome. So leave a comment. Let me know in the live chat if you guys wanna see this. Let me go through and try to read some of the comments with you guys and see what's going on in here. What's going on, James? Good to see you here. Eating dinner while you're watching. That's all right. What else do we have here? Pete the Pac-Man is in the house. What is going on, Pete the Pac-Man? Another fellow YouTuber. He's got an awesome channel. Does a ton of openings. Um, so let's see what else is going on in here. Dark Blastoise. You guys are excited. So you guys definitely want to see this opening. What's going on, Cal? What's going on? Video game replays and more. Ton of people. And yes, Japanese booster box opening coming soon. Gyarados Freak, what is up? It's good to see you here as well. It's so cool to see you guys live in the chat here, chatting it up. Um, let's see, three Charizards, ooh, yeah, if you guys didn't see my Japanese challenge opening, I pulled three Charizards out of that box, that was pretty exciting, guys, um, 
Are you going to complete the gym challenge set, says AJ. Um, yeah, so I don't know if you saw the last video or not, but check that out first. I don't want to spoil anything, uh, but that was the conclusion to the five-part series of the Japanese challenge booster box opening. Um, yeah, what is going on? Uh, what's up, Trainer Blue? What's up, Cameron in the house? Kyle King? What's going on? Yeah, guys, okay, so... Boostuber says, open a pack live. So guys, that is actually something that we're going to do. So don't worry, guys. I didn't just tease you with this rocket booster box. We're actually going to open up some vintage stuff right now. So let's jump into it, guys. So I'm going to show you exactly what we're opening. This is actually some pretty exciting stuff. I actually really wish I had some sleeves in here. I literally used the last of my sleeves uh, like an hour ago, and I forgot to refill them. But guys, I'm going to show you right now what we have. Dun, 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 Check this out, guys. We got a Japanese fossil booster pack. Then we have a Japanese rocket booster pack. And finally, we got a Japanese jungle booster pack, guys. We're going to crack these open live. I'm really excited. Oh, what do you guys think? Which pack should we do first? Let me know. Leave a comment in the, light, in, in the uh, live chat on the side there. Let me know what you guys want to see opened up first to start it off. Jungle. We got two votes for jungle. Three votes for jungle. Four, five, six, seven. Everybody wants to see jungle. Really? I mean, jungle's an awesome set. I'm kind of surprised because I thought it'd be pretty, a little bit more even. Everybody's saying jungle. What's up, Jay? Good to see you here. Roxanne, of course, says LOB, the Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTuber in the house. All right, guys. So this is how we're going to do this. Okay, actually, that's interesting. This has like a third-party barcode on the back there. Um, it's like covering the actual one. So I don't know how long ago that was put on there, but it looks old. It says made in Japan. So guys, there is going to be a hollow in this pack, which is pretty awesome. So what do you guys want to see out of this? Uh, I'm going to have to put the card in the front to the back because that is the hollow. And all these Japanese packs are going to have hollows in them. So let's go like this. See if I could do this on the camera here. Um, yeah, guys, I'm going to try to get a two camera set up soon. So give me a second so I can see what is going on. So I kind of see a reflection there. So let me get a little closer. All right, guys. So see if you can see that. All right. We got a Butterfree. We got a Gloom. We got a Weeping Bell. People are calling it in the comments. Someone said Scyther. Ryan says Scyther. Adam says Scyther. Let's see what we got, guys. We got a Goldeen. I can see the reflection on my iPhone case, so I can see what we have here. Let me get a little closer. We got a Paris. Jolteon. People are calling out the Jolteon. That would be sick. We got a Spiro. People are calling out Lapras. We got a Jigglypuff. Look how clean these cards are, guys. How crazy is this? We got a Meowth. I think we're coming up on that last card, guys. Let's see. Of course not. Pikachu. I always do that. It's the classic Pokey Rev uh, thing there. I call last card every time. I think we're coming up on that last card. Oh, okay, guys. We got a Pinsir. Not bad. Not bad. Check that out. We get a close-up for you guys on there. We got the Pinsir. Check out that hollow. How sick is that? We got Ryan in the house. What's going on, guys? Oh, what's going on, Luke? Both of you guys joined up. So my good friends. Thanks for joining up, guys. Good to see you here. Yes, I noticed you. <laughs> so, guys, we got a pincer. We're going to keep it going, guys. Let's do the next pack. What do you guys think? What should we do? We got the rocket, and we got fossil. What do you guys think? Let's have another vote. We got Rocket. Two Rockets. Gyarados Freak says Rocket. Fossil, Fossil, Rocket, 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 Fossil. Mmm, looks like, I think Rocket. Yeah, Rocket. That's close. And eh, Rocket's coming out ahead. All right, guys. We're going to do a Rocket Booster Pack up next. Let's keep it going, guys. And guys, once I open these packs up, I have some more stuff I want to show you. Um... And I also want to answer some of you guys' questions, so um, I'll leave some time towards the end where you can go through and I can try to answer some of you guys' questions. I know a lot of you guys have been trying to get in contact with me, and I think this would probably be the best way to go about it is to just 
do this live and answer some of you guys' questions as best that I can. Okay, guys, so cards are ready to go. Right here we have a Meowth. Oh, people are calling the Charizard and the Dark Blastoise. I don't know. We got an Ekans. We have a something I can't see. Gloom. We got a Gloom. We got a Magnemite. We have a trainer, it looks like. And guys, I'm literally looking on the reflection of my iPhone. This is how low budget this live event is, but I'm glad you guys came and joined up. Anyway, we got a Primate. We got a Charizard or Gyarados calling it out. Let's see. We got a Grimer, Dark Blastoise. People are calling out Raichu. Am I getting out of focus here? Let me see. This is actually pretty difficult. Uh, we have uh, another trainer. I can't really see. We got Jolteon, and we're going to come up on that last card, guys. Can we pull the Charizard off of one pack? Can we do it, guys? Can we do it? I don't know. Oh, uh, what do we got? I can't even say Dark Dragonite. Dude, nice. Are you kidding me? That's sick. We got the Dark Dragonite, guys. Check that out. That is crazy. Look at that. Oh, not too bad. It's a little bit off-centered. You guys want to take another quick peek at it? Not bad, but guys, we got the Dark Dragonite. That's definitely one of the best pulls you could get out of this for sure. Um, oh, man, that is crazy. All right, so we got the Pinsir. We got the Dark Dragonite. I'd say that's top three. I think it's Charizard, Blastoise, and Dark Dragonite. But guys, so we have one more pack left. Um, let's, let's see what we can do, guys. This man needs sleeves. Yes, I do, AJ. I need sleeves. I definitely need sleeves. But I put them back on top of the pack on the side of the table there. So hopefully they'll be all right for now. I have sleeves somewhere. Of course, I forgot them. Dragonite is my favorite Pokemon. Yeah. Dragonite is awesome. All right, guys. Let's do this. The last pack we have. And then I'm going to show you guys some more stuff. Let me just make sure this is centered. It's kind of hard to see with the iPhone. So where am I at here? Okay, that's... Which way am I going here? Sorry guys, hang on one second. I'm trying to figure this out. There's like a lag and I'm watching the, the live on my laptop, but there's like a five or 10 second delay. I think that's in the center, yeah. Okay, so we got the Geodude. We got a Krabby. We have a... Golbat. We have a Ekans. I need to put like a mirror or something on the other side so I can see what card it is. We got a, I think it's a Recycle. I can't even see the name of it. We have a Cloyster. Somebody's calling Articuno. We got somebody calling a Gengar. We got a Tentacool. We got a Kabuto. We got a Mr. Fuji. Oh, what do we got? I can't even see it. We got a Kabutops. Not bad, guys. We got a Kabutops from Fossil. That's pretty sick. Let's check it out. Let me check it out a little bit closer. Pretty clean. There's a small print line on it, but not bad, guys. So we got a Kabutops out of that. Yeah, they're a little bit off center, unfortunately. So we had the Kabutops. We had the Dark. Dragonite. I'm gonna check that out. Then we had the pincer. Boom. Right there. Not bad, guys. So let's keep this going. So next up, I'm gonna show you guys some stuff, um, some things that came in that are pretty interesting. Um, and just things that really didn't get to have their own video, but I thought it'd be cool just to show them live. Um, some of these store some of these items have a pretty interesting story behind them, so um uh, this is a Pokedex. Now, I don't know if you guys recognize this, but these are the original Pokedex from the 90s. Um, I had these as a kid growing up. Does anybody remember these Pokedex? Or am I the only one that used to have these? But this is like the OG Pokedex back in the day. Um, you would literally turn this on 
and it would just you could type in the Pokemon here, but I'm covering something up because on, on purpose because I want to show you guys this. But check this out. So this is the original Pokedex. I'm gonna turn it on. Check that out, guys. Pikachu on the front there. Yeah, these were crazy. I remember as a kid, I would literally walk around with this in my pocket everywhere. And you could literally just type in the Pokemon, um, the Pokedex number on the Pokemon. You could put the Pokemon in there. Um, it was really awesome. And I still need to find one of these sealed. But anyway, so I went to a local card store. Uh, this is probably a few weeks ago. And I was in there, I was buying stuff. And I saw this Pokedex and I didn't think anything of it. So I purchased the Pokedex. And then I got home and I, I looked at it a little bit closer and I realized that I'm going to cover the last name up. But there's a name on here and the first name is Kayla. And so I looked at that and I'm like, you know what? I should contact this person and see if they would want their original Pokedex back. Because if, I, if somebody found my Pokedex and had my name on it, I would really appreciate it. You know, even if somebody just showed me a picture, I'm like, oh my gosh, like that's my Pokedex from when I was a kid. You know, like you have the memories connected to it. You know, whether your parents got it for you or, you know, just remember being on it, playing with it or whatever, you know, time of your life. Uh, so I was like, you know, what, let me contact this girl, Kayla. So I contacted her. I found her and uh, it was really easy. to. I just typed her in on Facebook. There was like literally one person with that name. So I contacted her and I, was, I left her a, uh, you know, a message on Facebook. I didn't think she was going to read it, but I was like, you know, hey, this is probably the weirdest message you'll ever receive of, in your entire life. But I found something that belongs to you. I purchased it and I wanted to see if you'd want it back. And I sent her the picture of it and I'm like, she's not going to answer it because it's pretty weird just to message some random person on Facebook. But she actually replied and she was like super excited about it. And uh, she couldn't believe that I actually had her Pokedex. And she told me the whole story. She said her dad sold it probably 15 years ago. And I told her where I found it. I found it in another state actually. And then she lived in another state further away and it was pretty crazy because like she saw her Pokedex for the first time after like probably like 15 years and uh you know I asked her if she wanted it back but she said no it's in good hands you keep it and I thought that was a really I don't know a pretty interesting story because it just goes to show you that the stuff all this stuff is uh emotionally attached to these people and even though you know she grew past Pokemon and everything she still thought it was awesome and yeah so I, I just wanted to share that story with you guys so this Pokedex actually means a lot more to someone else, you know, than maybe even me, but I'm going to take good care of it first. So I have this Pokedex. Um, so yeah, guys, that's one of the items that I wanted to show you. It's just, I couldn't do a whole video on it, obviously, because, you know, it'd probably be like a four minute video. But anyway, let's keep moving on here. So I'm going to show you another pretty interesting item I picked up. And I don't think, yeah, I definitely didn't do this one in a video. So I picked this up recently. Check this out, guys. This is, oh gosh, <laughs> it's still okay. This is a Hey You Pikachu for the Nintendo 64. Mint condition, still mint condition, yeah. Mint condition, Hey You Pikachu. Who remembers this? So this was pretty awesome. Back in the day, you actually could play this on Nintendo 64. You could talk to Pikachu, and I'll show you on the side there. It actually had a voice thing. So this was back in the day before voice technology was really really like good so this thing did not work too well but so this was a game I played back in the day when I was a kid you could play with Pikachu tell him you know do different things with them go fishing and all this kind of stuff so yeah I mean this this was pretty cool so this is I picked this up for it was only a hundred bucks factory sealed which actually blew my mind as you can see like it's still sealed on the side here so that side and right there so this is really cool to add to my collection um I don't know how many of you guys are into that, but I wanted to show you that as well. Um, and then something else here I want to show you guys. Where is it? And these are kind of like cool, like little pickups um, that I, you know, found recently. This is another pretty interesting one. Check this out, guys. These are dog tags uh, for Pokemon from back in the day. I don't know if you could see uh, the Pokemon in there, but there's actually Charizard in there. So... You got the Charizard, you got Golduck, Cubone, Pokeball. There's 20 different dog tags in here, so you got to try to collect all of them. And it's a Sears exclusive item. So, yeah, I mean, I thought this was pretty cool. I just picked it up. It's still factory sealed. It looks like Toy Site was the ones that made this item. So, yeah, this, this was pretty cool. So, a little pickup here. I think this is maybe like 20 bucks. Um, and, yeah, guys, I'm going to show you, show you one more thing, and then I'll... 
jump into it and we'll do some questions and answers and uh, see what kind of questions you guys have. So here's another cool item, guys. Check it out. This is a Pokemon storage tin for your cards. It's the original Gotta Catch Em All um, saying on the bottom there. So yeah, this is a tin. It's still in the original plastic that it came in, but you know, back in the day, you could store all your cards in here, guys. So throw in all those vintage cards you have and. Yeah, I mean, this is this is what it's all about, guys. The nostalgia and just collecting how you want to collect, what you want to collect. And, like, this this stuff here, you know, 15 bucks, 15 bucks. It's just, you know, this is the kind of stuff that really hits home with a lot of people. Um, and, yeah, this is the expensive stuff, you know, the expensive steel products and all that. But at the end of the day, you know, a single card, like this card, could mean something to somebody. And, you know, it's a 10-cent card. So, okay, guys. Um... I think we're going to jump into some questions and answers, so I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. So if you guys have any questions, just shoot it in the live chat on the side there, and I'll kind of go through and try to read and go through as many as I can. Um, I'm sure I can't get through all of them, but if anybody has a question in regards to, you know, me personally, my my collections, um, or advice on what they should, col you know, collecting, or any kind of questions at all, feel free um, nothing too crazy, obviously, but let's see. First question. Do you get your hair cut every day? <laughs> okay, guys. So I actually am a licensed barber as well. So I cut my own hair and yeah, I, I don't cut it every day. It's probably once every like five days I'll cut the sides down, but yeah, that's one of the things I used to do back in the day. I'm kind of a jack of all trades. What's your eBay store called? My eBay store is called Pokemon Revolution, and it's there's a link to it in every video at the bottom. So if you guys ever want to check out the store, feel free. Um, you can always click on the link in the video, and yeah, that's, that's the name of the store. I started off, I don't know how many of you guys know this. You guys probably know me just as PokeRev, but I started out originally as Pokemon Revolution Cards. So I, I've been on Instagram for probably five years now. And it took me that long to finally jump into YouTube. And now that I'm on YouTube, I shortened the name down. made it a lot easier. So you guys just call me Pokey Rev. You can call me Rev, whatever. Um, but I made it a lot easier and just kind of trimmed it down. So do you have a Skyridge booster box? Yes, I do. And so guys, I'm going to show you a lot more of my collection. I'm trying to do, I'm probably going to do some kind of subscriber special where I show you a lot more of my stuff. Right now, um, I'm kind of reserved, and I'm kind of showing you things as much as I can without, you know, showing everything I want, because I want to make sure that, you know, I'm still able to show you guys content and new things, but I do have a Skyridge booster box, and I'm going to show that eventually, I'm going to show you more stuff um, as the YouTube channel progresses and as it grows, and I want to make sure I'm presenting it in the right way. I'm still learning, you know, the ins and outs of YouTube. There's filming, there's editing the videos, there's you know, how, how you are, you know, how you talk on camera and everything like that. Um, it just, I'm learning it as I go. So I just want to take it slow and bring as much content as I can while still making it to the best of my abilities as I learn. So let's see what else we have here. Um, okay. I've seen this question a lot. Is Hidden Fates pro products worth in investing in? Um, I'm going to tell you guys my opinion on that. And I'm not a financial advisor, but uh, so Hidden Fates, I think, is probably the best set released probably in the last five years. Um, and I would say Evolutions is, I thought Evolutions was a great set as well, but Hidden Fates, I think as long as they stop printing it, it's, it's still already growing in value right out the gate. Um, I think it's a good long-term thing to hang on to. I'm definitely holding on to some of it, but when and and if it grows substantially in value is anybody's guess you know it could take 10 20 years from now um but i think it will be quicker than that i think if you're going to try to pick up any modern set hidden fates is a set to pick up for sure like without a doubt um and i don't even really hang on to modern stuff much and for me i think i would even hang on to that kind of stuff um but yeah that's kind of my take on it uh is this your first stream ever um, I'm sorry, let me read people's names that asked the question. Frieza, is this your first stream ever? No, I actually did a stream, um, it's probably five days ago. I was in my storage unit and I randomly just pulled out 
my phone. I was like, you know what, let me go through the storage unit a little bit with you guys and check out the stuff that's in there. It's a pretty big storage unit. I forget how many square feet it is, but it's, it's huge. Um, and I'm going to do that again because I didn't really get to th go through as much as I wanted to um, because I had a poor connection. I was in the back of the storage unit and the connection back there was really bad. So I wasn't even sure if the live was working well, but it did re-upload and I checked out and it looked good. So I definitely want to do that again. Um, let's see here. Captain Rogers, how did you build your collection over the years? That's a really good question. So where do I start with this? So. I would say I started really working on a collection only about five years ago. And the price difference in vintage stuff then compared to now is night and day. And I thought to myself, the, the first, how I got into it originally is, it's a pretty crazy story. So I don't think I've shared this with most people, but um, I used to buy and sell video games a lot. And during, I would say five years ago, I started buying up the Pokemon Game Boy games, like the original red, blue, um, and yellow, and gold, and silver, and stuff like that, and I'd buy them, and I'd put the new batteries in them, because on those cartridges, the batteries died out after a certain amount of years, and you couldn't save your game anymore, so I'd buy them up, and I would fix them up, and then I would sell them, and one day, I was searching on eBay, and this is a true story, because literally how I stumbled back into collecting was just, just randomly stumbling upon a listing. So I was on eBay, and I saw a listing for a Pokemon base set booster box, which, um, if you guys know, I think I have one behind me. Yeah, here's a base set booster box. So I stumbled upon the listing, and I said, oh my gosh, like, they actually still have original Pokemon cards sealed. Like, it didn't even cross my mind that you could still buy this stuff in sealed conditions. So I looked at it, and I saw the price on it, and I think back then the price was $900. So... $900 for a base unlimited booster box. They're now worth, I would say, around $4,000 just for the standard base unlimited box. So I said, you know what? I really love Pokemon. And I was doing well for myself back then. Um, I had a, you know, a business set up, a couple businesses. And I said, you know what? Let me jump back into Pokemon and just go for the original base set booster box. So I bought the box and I opened it up. And then I started getting into grading cards and all that stuff. And it just kind of snowballed. Um, pretty slowly. Then I started buying different sets. I started getting back into Gen 2 and so on. And then after all that time of just being involved with it, buying, selling, trading, collecting, it's just how I've amassed my collection. Um, so for every, say, every 10 things I bought, maybe I'd you know, sell half of them and keep the other half for myself, my own collection. And over time, it built up. Um, and that is pretty much how I did it. So that is the answer to your question. Um, let's see what else we have going on here. Um, um, do you, I'm sorry, I'm trying not to miss other people's questions. Um, uh, do you, okay, Matthew says, do you play the actual game? If so, what deck? So, no, actually, I solely just collect. I'm not a player. I used to play back in the day when I was a kid. Um, nothing serious. I was I never played in tournaments or anything like that. But it would always be um, I'd hang out, play with my brothers, or you know I play with friends and stuff like that. And it was you know the original base jungle fossil sets stuff like that. But I was never a serious player or anything like that. But I can respect the players, um, and especially at Pokemon Worlds, I got to see up close a lot of people playing the game and. And how much work and dedication and passion it goes into actually playing the card game. And day in, day out, learning and getting better. And it was really cool to see that um, up close. I was at Worlds this past year. Um, and it was awesome. That was the first time I've ever been at Pokemon Worlds. I would recommend you guys definitely try to go. It's in the UK next year. so Or this year. I'm trying to see if I can get out there. But uh, really awesome uh, just to watch people play the game and see how they did it and how they you know, became successful with playing and then watching the winners and everything is, is crazy. Um, um, are you a full-time collector in terms of a living? So actually, yes. Um, as since I, as soon as I started my YouTube channel up, I kind of made the commitment that I was going to drop certain things that I did on a daily basis, cut out things that were a part of my life for the past, you know, five or 10 years and 
make the commitment to try to solely uh, have a be a collector and have a business based off solely of Pokemon um, by itself. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I've kind of just taken the step and leaped into to YouTube as well full time. Um, and I, I don't really know, you know, how it's going to be long term, um, you know, if it's something sustainable. But right now, I know I'm having a ton of fun uh, building up this community with you guys and, you know, sharing my passions and experience with collecting. Um, but it's it's a ton of fun. So if you can, I'll leave it this way. If you can live your life and do what you love and also make money at the same time and, and have something that, you know, is sustainable and, you know, you can live off of, that is probably the best thing that you can do in life. Because if you're stuck uh, at a job that you don't really like, say, you, say you're at a nine to five job um, that you, you hate and you go there every day, you clock in and you're working for somebody else, making them a better life while your own life is suffering. So if, if there's people out there that want to try to get out of that, that trap of, of being stuck in that constant, you know, trying to please other people um, and not really helping out yourself, I think there are ways that you can go about that. Um, not necessarily just, you know, Pokemon. Pokemon is, is not the answer for everybody, but at the end of the day, if you can do what you love and you can, you know, live off of that, that is probably the best thing that you can do, do in life. You just have to figure it out. I've been trying to figure out my whole life, and I'm finally getting to the point where that's becoming a reality. Um, but yeah, that is the answer. I don't even remember what the question was at this point. <laughs> sometimes I just dive into stuff, and then I, I don't even know what, what I just ra ramble sometimes. So <laughs> um, let's see what else we got. Um, you inspired me to start my own channel. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's that is awesome. I, I've actually seen some comments people saying that um, I inspired them to jump back into the hobby or to, to start a channel or to just be more involved with Pokemon. Um, that seriously is, is just like one of the most amazing things to me that um, that I can have an impact on some people like like that in their life. It really means a lot. Um, and, and like I said before, building up this community is the main um, the main thing here, and you guys are making that a reality. I literally made this channel. I think the first upload was probably two months ago, maybe two and a half months ago, and the amount of people that have been coming in and showing support and, and everything like that is just, it's actually blown, like, it's blown my mind. Like, I couldn't actually believe it. Um, I've always been hesitant to jump into YouTube for, for years, and I finally decided that I was going to jump in because other people inspired me as well. You know, you have to find that inspiration. I had I found inspiration through other people, um, not necessarily only people in the Pokemon community, but other people in my life or people that I've, I've watched or read about. Um, and I always knew, you, you have to know the hardest, the most difficult step is taking the first step. Um, and the way I did it, the way I started this channel up was I was, I was literally just driving home one day um, and... I was, I was coming back from uh, my P.O. box where I get most of my mail sent and I'm driving home and I'm sitting there and I'm just like, you know, I, I was in one of those moods where I really wanted something, something more to happen. You know, you kind of get in that daily grind and just day in, day out. Um, I'm grateful for everything in my life though, but you know, it, it, sometimes I really, I think about it and I'm like, you know, is there something else that, that we can do in the short time that we have on this earth? So... I'm driving home and I, I get home and I'm sitting in the drive and I'm like, you know what? I think it's time. I think it's time to try to, to jump on YouTube and see if I can impact other people's lives uh, because so many people have impacted my life. So I jump on. I literally sit in here and there's nothing behind me. I mean, there was just boxes. It wasn't all set up like this. Nothing fancy. I didn't have the lights. I didn't have the microphones. I didn't have anything like that. Um, and you can see it if you go back to my first video. Uh, I literally just put the camera down. I think it was called how to how to uh, how to know if you have a shadowless base set booster box. Um, so I put the camera down. Just I literally walked up to the camera, hit record, no editing, nothing. Sat down. I did it all in one one take, just one straight take through. Filmed the video and I just talked about what I was passionate about. And I didn't think anything of it. Uploaded it to YouTube. And before you know it, I just start seeing people just connecting with it and 
you know, leaving a comment saying, wow, this, this was a, you know, a cool video. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for teaching me that. It's cool to see some of your collection, blah, blah, blah. And from there, it just kind of was like, wow, like it literally just took that one step. If I didn't, if I wasn't driving home and finally decide, you know what, to hit the record button, it would have never happened. So you, you know, I think that people really just need to take that first step, right? If you don't take the first step, it's never going to happen. You know, you can think about things as much as you want, plan as much as you want, but if you don't take that first step, guys, it just it doesn't happen. But yeah, so I yeah, I, I'm I'm happy that I've, I've been able to inspire some people. I really am. It means a lot to me. Um, but let's see what else we have on here. Um, Glorious beard says Chris. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, yeah, that was another thing. I just woke up one day. I'm like, you know, what? I'm gonna try to grow a beard, um, and I did it. But let's see what else we have here. Been enjoying the videos, Mr. Mila. I'm sorry, I think that's how you said it. Thank you. Um, um, let's see what else we have here. Um, are you crying? No, I'm not crying. <laughs> it's hot in here though. I have like four lights on me. I respect you, man. Thank you, I appreciate that spider. Um, Let's see what else. I'm happy you made this channel. It says AJ. I appreciate that, AJ. Thank you. Pokey Go Dad. Rookie Rev. What up, bro? What's going on? Good to see you here, Pokey Go Dad. Um, let's see. Anybody has a question? Um, Steve, I think that's the name. Excuse me. I got to take a sip of water. Oh, I lost the question. Where'd it go? Um, what item are you trying to get your hands on? Um, what item? Well, right now, the items that I've been trying to get my hands on are items that are really going to help the channel out, um, in terms of having things that I can open up and share with you guys on the channel, um, things that I can, basically things that, that, that are going to help the channel out and help. Uh, help you guys have, you know, things, things to look forward to, things to watch, whether it be, you know, like this rocket box, this, this was a purchase for the channel. Um, and I'm going to open up this box on the channel. We're going to do a series. We're going to try to collect the entire set in the binder. Um, and you know, stuff, stuff like that for my personal collection goals, I'm pretty much already there. I have everything that I really ever wanted. I mean, of course, there's the um, the Pikachu Illustrator trophy card, which would be amazing. But at this point, it's never gonna happen. I, I'm pretty certain I'm never gonna get that card. Excuse me. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's something that's not I, I don't see ever happening, just because the price of them are so so high that I can't really justify um, spending that much on something. I mean, other than that, though, yeah, just just things for the channel. Um, Let's see what else we have here. Trainer Trey, what's going on? Good to see you here, man. Good to see you. Um, what does your wife think about Pokemon? Oh, gosh. So, what does my wife think about Pokemon? Well, um, she thinks it's cool. She's not, like, super into it or anything like that. Um, but she appreciates it and she respects it. But no question. Just caught your live stream. Elizabeth, what's going on? Elizabeth Trend. That was actually, you won, um, you're one of the winners from my giveaway from when I first started the channel. Good to see you here. Um, what else do we got here? What is your favorite set? Um, it says B. I recently started collecting again. My favorite set. See, my favorite set, it's not one set. It's always changing. And that's the cool thing about Pokemon is you can you, you can enjoy what you enjoy at that moment in time. Um, I think you know base set is always gonna have that special spot in my heart because that was the original Pokemon set. Um, you know that has the original base set Charizard, and you know for some people yeah it's probably a little bit boring because you know the the artworks weren't crazy with base. You know they didn't have any crazy backgrounds or you know anything like you know ridiculous, but. To me, that is the original base set. You know, that's it. That's where Pokemon started. So yeah, I would say base. But you know, other sets I really enjoy. Um, you know, EX era uh, sets like Dragon Frontiers, um, Rocket Returns. Those are awesome sets, and they're sets that I never had as I was growing up. So 
um, to to dive into those sets and, and to to get into stuff that's older that I didn't experience as a kid is is really awesome. Um, I really like how they did a lot of the artworks in those cards. Um, but yeah, I can't say there's one set in particular that oh it's my number one set, but you know I enjoy different cards from different sets, and it depends on some. Some days I'm like, oh, I really, really love Rocket right now. Like, and I just get into Rocket and just start looking at the cards and, and the artworks and everything. I'm just like so, so into it. And then, you know, I'll, I'll look at it for a while and then I'll be like, oh my gosh, like I got to check out like, uh, you know, Neo Genesis or something. I'm like, oh, I just get so obsessed with it. Um, but yeah, so it's always changing for me. Um, let's see what else we have here. Um... Who inspired you in the card game? Um, in terms of like, uh, so this question is from Richard. Um, in terms of who inspired me, uh, there are a lot of collectors, and you know the bigger serious collectors that have always inspired me and pushed me to, to keep it going. Um, and then there's also um, the 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 YouTubers that also are collectors and have their own types of passions. Um, with Pokemon, and not necessarily only just the super serious part, but getting into, you know, the modern stuff, and really, you know, just, um, really just diving into it, and, and I found experience, literally, probably any, any Poke YouTuber over the past five years that I've watched, I've, I've definitely been inspired by, whether it's to, to jump into sets that I've never, you know, tried before, or, you know, jump into the newer stuff, I mean, there's, there's so many, so many out there, and, um, there's all there's inspiration everywhere um but yeah whether it be somebody like you know gem mint pokemon you know tca gaming real breaking nade um leonhardt sm pratt like there's so and i can't the list will just literally go on forever because and i don't want to forget certain people because there's probably tons of people in my mind that i can't think of right now live but you know there's there's all these these youtubers and collectors and everybody that's come together people on instagram my buddy ryan you know my buddy luke uh, my buddy Danny D, like there's there's so many people that have inspired me. Every single per person that I've talked to through the community that I've had a good communication with has definitely inspired me in one way or another. Um, so yeah, th there's an inspiration everywhere. You can find it anywhere. Um, and you guys, of course, I can't forget you guys as subscribers because you guys are literally the ones that are pushing me and, and keeping me motivated. I, I see messages constantly, um, you know, to, to keep up the good work and it, in you, you might not know how much your words impact me, but I read at all the messages that you guys send, all, all the comments, and while I can't get back to everybody, it's very difficult um, to, to reply to everybody. I read them all, and, and they're all really inspiring, and it keeps me keeps me going. But let's see what other questions we have here. Um, let's see. Pack battle with Nate. <laughs> that would be awesome, actually. Um, yeah, we're definitely... We're definitely going to do something. We're definitely going to do something. Nate is an awesome guy. Uh, real Breaking Nate on YouTube. I'm sure you guys already know. I don't even need to mention it, but he's awesome. And uh, we've been talking a lot. We became good friends uh, recently. So, yeah, definitely want to do something with him. Um, let's see. Do you plan on collaborating with any of these guys? Yeah, definitely. Um, like I mentioned, definitely. Um, Luke, when will you tell our first edition base box story? Yeah, guys, so, okay. Uh, TCG Revival on Instagram, uh, one of my good, good friends. Uh, so we, I want to say it was probably a year and a half ago now. Um, we got a first edition base set booster box. And if you guys saw one of my previous recent videos about how I got scammed on one, uh, I have another video about the good parts of buying a first edition base box because I was not scammed on that. Uh, so that is going to be a pretty cool video. I have a lot of amateur video of, of like the getting the box and, and certain things that happen. I don't want to give anything away, but uh, to, to Luke, yes, I'm going to do that video. It's just going to take a while to, to find all the videos and, and all the, the, you know, the pictures and put the whole story together, but I'm definitely going to do that. Um, I can't wait. I have a lot of really uh, interesting stories from the past five years of collecting um, that I want to share with you guys, but I just need to find a way to to build the story 
uh, find all the old pictures, all the old videos, and, and kind of build a video off of it. But I have tons more content. Um, I think I mentioned in a previous video, I have like probably like seven or eight pages now of uh, video ideas and videos planned out that I want to get to. But yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna come in time. So let's see what else we have here. Uh, TCD Revival is a beast, says Burns. Bro, yes, he is. He's awesome. Um, what's up, Jordan French? Jordan French says hi. Um, I don't know if he was saying that to me, actually. Hi, anyway. Um, let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Love the stories. What's up, Simon? Good to see you here. Um, you've been here from the beginning, and it's really cool to see you in the live. Appreciate you being here. Um, how'd you get the neon light? Uh, yeah, the neon light, guys. This is like my, like, my trademark thing now. Pokey Rev with the neon in the back. So, I didn't know I was getting it. Okay, so I, this was this past Christmas. So, a couple months ago, um, I was, I was just hanging out, you know, it was the day before Christmas. And, you know, I woke up the next day and we went down and my wife and my two kids, um, I have a daughter and a son and yeah, I went down, you know, it was about them. They want, they're going to open their presents up and everything. And so my wife, uh, she had a gift for me and I literally was not expecting it whatsoever. Like didn't even cross my mind that something like this would, would be, would be there. But she got me this, she, she got it custom made for me and I opened it up and I couldn't believe it. I posted it on Instagram as soon as I got it and I ran down. I, I literally, I put it up right away, plugged it in and I was like, geez, she thinks of the best ideas. So she hooked it up. That's the Pokey Rev sign, the neon sign. That's where it came from, uh, from the wife. So yeah, it was awesome. Um, oh, we got ADHD's life here. What is going on, man? It's awesome to see you here. He is another fellow YouTuber. He does Pokemon. Uh, Naruto, all kinds of really awesome stuff. SpongeBob, he's such a cool guy to watch. So make sure you guys check him out. Uh, he's, he's just such a passionate guy, and I really, really enjoy watching his videos. Um, and yeah, he, he, he's been in Pokemon for a while now, and he's really jumping into more of the serious side of Pokemon collecting. Um, and yeah, I've, I've been sending him some things and, and mystery boxes, and it's just been so cool um, to, to be able to talk to him and, and learn about his story and his passion for Pokemon. So Awesome to see you here, Marcus. Let's see who else is here. Oh, we got Real Breaking Nate in the house. Uh, awesome to see you. Yeah, um, Real Breaking Nate, it's cool to see you here, man. Um, I'm really glad that you joined the chat um, and the live, so great to see you. Who else? Let's see what else we have here. Are your kids into Pokemon, says AJ. Um, uh, my daughter and I recently actually just opened our first Pokemon booster pack, and she thought it was awesome. Um, but she is, she's going to be two pretty soon. Um, so she's not really there to, you know, she, she doesn't really understand it yet, but, um, yeah, she, she, uh, she hangs out in the Poke Cave sometimes and, you know, points to different things and says, Ooh, so she's learning about it, but we opened up uh, a couple booster packs. Um, I think it was, um, what did we open up? I don't even remember, but we opened up a couple packs and every time I pulled a card out, she was like, Ooh, Ooh. Ooh, you know, get to the reverse. She was like, oh, showing mommy. But yeah, so uh, yeah, she um, she's getting into it. Um, what else? What else? What else? Do, do, do. And thanks again, guys, for all the people that have joined up on this live. I wasn't expecting this many people to be here. Um, and I'm trying to answer as many questions as I can. It's kind of tough to see them all. Um, dun, dun, dun. what else do we have here? Um, let's see. Are you going to London? Says Chris. Um, so I mentioned earlier, there is Pokemon Worlds. Um, 2020 is in London. Um, I'm trying to figure out if I can get out there or not. Um, I really, really want to, so it's up in the air, but I'd love to see um, if some of you guys are going. It'd be awesome to meet up and uh, meet some of you guys in person. 
but right now, um, not totally sure yet. I, I definitely am I'm going to try to figure it out, though. But it would be really cool to be there. I went to the last one, which I already mentioned. It's awesome. If you guys have a chance to go to Pokemon Worlds, just go. Just go. No excuses. I mean, unless it's, like, halfway across the world, like, for, you know, being in London. But, you know, if it's not too far, if it's in the same country as you, definitely try to, try to go. Um, you'll have a blast. Meeting people is the best part. Um... Let's see. If we hit 10k subs by Sunday, he will shave his beard. You know what? No, I won't do that. <laughs> I was going to say, mm, yeah, I'll do it. No, I can't. I can't do it. I have a baby face without the beard. With the beard, I probably add on five years, I would say. Um, without the beard, I, I'm going to look five years younger. Can't do it. The beard has to stay. Um... Unless there was just some kind of like crazy big like charity event or something where it would um, it would it would impact a lot of people and it would do a lot of good in the world, that would be something that yeah I would do it w without question. Um, but for subscriber count, I'm not gonna do it for subscriber count. So um, let's see what else. Can you open up one expedition? Um, I opened up three packs earlier. If you want to, uh, the video will be back up. So if you guys check out, I opened up Japanese Jungle. Um, fossil and rocket so I open those up you guys want to check that out when it re uploads um, let's see what else we got here guys anybody have some more questions I'll probably yeah, I'll probably make this live about an hour long so looks like we have about um, eight more minutes left so if you have any more last-minute questions or um, anything else that you guys might want to ask me Let's see. Let me try to scroll back up. I don't know if it shows me all of the um, the comments from earlier, actually. Um, can you do mystery boxes on eBay? Um, yeah, so I'm trying to figure out a way to possibly do more mystery boxes. I know there's a stigma um, from, from a lot of the serious collectors about mystery boxes, uh, but, you know... I try to do them in a way where I'm putting a lot of value into the boxes and I'm putting things in that are actually really, really good and people are constantly buying and they're not things that are just sitting around. So I don't know if I could make a way for it to be available to mass amounts of buyers because at that point I'd be selling through so much of my collection and my personal stuff that I would not you know, it would be more of just selling things off very quickly, and I'm not the kind of person to sell a lot of my stuff. If you guys look at my eBay, I have, um, I probably have maybe 10% of my collection, my, you know, my inventory or collection on eBay for sale. I, I wouldn't even put it at 10%. I'd say more like maybe 5%. I hold on to so many things, whether it be for my personal collection, uh, long-term investments, really just, I, I'm not someone to, to sell things so quickly. So when when I do, if I were to do massive amounts of mystery boxes, I'd just be selling through so much of my stuff. I, I really wouldn't want to do that. I mean, I'm attached to a lot of this stuff. So, um, let's see if we have a couple more questions we can squeeze in here. Um, excited to hear you on the Shadowless podcast. Yes, guys. So I'm going to be on the Shadowless podcast with Real Breaking Nate and Jordan French. So I'm excited for that. It's like one of those things where you, you watch a TV show or, you know, you listen to, to the radio and you're like, oh, that'd be cool to, to you know, be on that show. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be on it. So um, yeah, it's definitely gonna be a fun time. I can't wait. What else do we have on here? Uh, Calvin says, hey, Pookie Rabbit, hope you're having a great day. Love the channel. Thank you, Calvin. I appreciate that. Thanks for being here. Um, Let's see what else we have here. Um, dun, dun, dun. Danny D, what is going on? Biggest challenges you've... Mm, okay, biggest challenge you've had to overcome. Um, first off, thanks for being here, Danny. It's cool to see you here. Um, I've been really good friends with Danny D over the years. It's somebody that I met in the Pokemon community probably back in the beginning. Um, he's a huge Blastoise collector. Uh, he's really, really passionate about it. And, uh, you know, I think one day he's going to make it out here and uh, we might have a little 
Blastoise video going up, or a pretty, maybe a big Blastoise video because he has one of the coolest Blastoise collections out there. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to be able to be friends with him over the years and actually sell him uh, a decent amount, or not a decent amount of his collection, but, you know, a small amount of his collection. Um, and it's really cool to see it go to somebody passionate like him. Um, but some of the biggest challenges, I can't really think of one in particular, but I feel like there's challenges every day, um, you know, and, and they're just, you have to overcome those challenges. You know, it could be something as simple as um, trying to, you know, start up the YouTube or, you know, start up the, the collection or, you know, what to buy. Um, there's challenges that I face every day, but with challenges, you just have to, you have to overcome them, um, you know, and, and grow from it. If you let something like that stop you, like if, if there's a challenge in front of you or there's something, you know, that, that you're facing, giving up is, is, you know, that's the worst thing you can do because that problem is it's just going to be there and you never you never face it so uh off the top of my head i can't really think of one in particular but as long as you're, you're you know growing from them and, and you're facing the challenges and and you know you're figuring it out you know that's the best thing i could say um let's see what else you should do tiktok oh, okay so i actually did start up a tiktok uh it's probably not even a week ago so if you guys want to check me out on TikTok, I made one. Um, I'll probably link it in the description. I don't know what I'm doing on TikTok, but it's fun. So I just kind of mess around on there. And um, yeah, it's it's I I didn't even have TikTok on my phone until like a week ago. So yeah, I made one. Um, I think my name on there is PokeRev. Um, maybe. Yeah, I think it's PokeRev. Uh, room tour soon. Yes. So Matthew asked room tour soon. Um, yeah, so... I'm going to do, so guys, okay, so I'm going to tell you this on the live first here so that you guys are the first ones to hear about it, but the Pokey Cave is not just one cave, like this, it's a vast cave of tunnels, if you know what I mean, so there's going to be different areas of the Pokey Cave that are not just here in this room that I'm going to show you, so there's other places where I'm going to take you on tours of. Um, that I think you're really going to like, but I'm trying to figure out when I want to do that and how I want to do it. And yeah, but I'm pretty excited for that. I'm, I'm probably going to save it for some kind of subscriber special or, you know, some, something like that. Um, as I build up and I, and I learn how to, you know, create videos better on YouTube, because like I mentioned earlier, it's all about, you know, figuring out yourself and, and kind of growing on YouTube and, and learning everything, the ins and outs. So I'm taking it, you know, slow, but I'm also working really hard. So that'll be coming soon. And we looks like we have enough time for one or two more questions. Um, uh, for such a new channel, it's amazing to see how much support you have, says Adam. Thank you, Adam, and thank you, everybody. Yeah, I, it's, like I mentioned earlier, it's blown my mind as well because I was not expecting this at all, and it's just been so amazing. The people that have reached out to me over, over the past two months about it and everything has just really, really motivated me. Uh, to keep going and keep pushing it further and, and you know, keep the channel going. Um, get your popcorn ready for the Pokey Cave Tour. <laughs> yes, get your popcorn ready for that. Um, let's see. Share my beard grooming routine. Um, yeah, maybe I will do a video like that. Why not? Um, Devin says, you got me back into Pokemon cards. I thank you. My bank account, on the other hand, does not. Well, yeah, it's an expensive hobby, and it's cool to hear that you jump back in to Pokemon. Um, it's really cool to hear that, and yeah, it's ex it could be as expensive as you want, um, but you know, when you're jumping in, you know, try to try to kind of save your money for those good opportunities that come up. And I'll probably do a video on how to find. Uh, good deals and, and you know how to spot things on, on whether it be on eBay or certain things that I want to do more things also on the road so if you guys saw my snap station video that was like the most fun probably one of the the most fun I had making a video um, I was on the road for that one traveling around I, I drove like it was like eight hour round trip to, to make that video and to get that snap station so um, yeah, and just going to like local places and, and trying to find deals stuff like that. I think it'd be really fun. So hopefully you guys would like that. I, I have so many ideas for the channel, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep keep pushing it, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. But uh, yeah, guys. So I think that's gonna be it. it. Looks like we hit the one hour mark for the live. So um, yeah, I just want to say again, thank you guys so much. 
for joining up on this live. It's been the most fun I've had connecting with you guys ever. And I definitely want to keep doing stuff like this. I'll probably do lives. Maybe I'll do one a week. I'll probably make an announcement about it. So uh, maybe something like that. But this has definitely been a ton of fun. And I'm really, really glad that we have this channel up and we have you guys here. And it's just awesome. It's a blast. Um, but yeah, guys, that is going to be it. And I hope you guys have a great day. And I, I'll see you on the next one. And also, I have to get up to turn the camera off because that's how low budget this live is, guys. I have to get up, physically get up, and turn the live off. All right, guys. That is going to do it. See you guys next time.